Last week, I remember I told you that if you think you don't have any reason to prosper as a person, prosper so that your life can attract people to Jesus. I remember I said that last week. That if you don't have any other reason to want to prosper, decide to prosper so that your life can become a good advertisement for Jesus. That will bring people, that will make you to decide to say, if this born again Christian is prospering like this, I think I will prefer to become born again too. Up as Wednesday, I told us that uh, we can win the world by our love life. That as Christians, let's work together in love. You know, I was reading church uh, history and I read uh, the white garment um, church movement. That's the Aladura Church, the uh, Celestial Church, you know. And I was just reading their history and I discovered that many, many years ago, that's a uh, I think the founder of uh, uh, Aladra is uh, 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 Evangelist Moses Uri Molade. Am I right? Yes. He died at the age of uh, 54 years. You know? And uh, you know what led to his death? He died because he was betrayed by his trusted uh, friend and prayer, uh, prayer partner. I think, is it Olaju or so? Um, uh, she's a female. We were always praying together. They were not married. There was no relationship they had than gospel. Preaching around, praying around together. And uh, the Aladra Church became a movement. They used to call him Moses Urimolade Baba Aladura. That's what they call him. That's where the church brought the name from. Uh, that Aladura stuff. But later they changed their name to uh, Kirubim and Seraphim. Then later they became a group came out that now became the sacred, you know, Kiribu and Seraphon, things like that. They were doing very, 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 very well before uh, the devil came in and brought separation between Uri Molade and the, the woman herself. And she pulled out of the church to start another arm of Kiribu and Seraphon. They are the ones they call them, they call themselves the sacred. Now, Uri Moladi was still doing fine until another 700 set of people gathered themselves together again and pulled out. He couldn't bear it again. His heart couldn't carry it. That was how sickness started to come in gradually. You know, before you betray, before you betray brotherly love, I want to, you to think of the things you will destroy. Are you getting me? That's what the first thing we studied first Sunday. Before you betray brotherly love, think of the things that your betrayer will cause to brotherly love. That's why the Bible says, let brotherly love do what? Continue. Today we are looking at evangelism without words. Don't forget the central topic is winning the world for Jesus. And we're looking at evangelism without words, which means winning the world without opening your mouth to preach. Maybe somebody else you handle the camera. You can't do two things at the same time. Okay. Hallelujah. Winning the world for Jesus. Under it, evangelism without words. That's what we are looking at today. How you can win the world for Jesus without opening your mouth to preach. Next week, we'll be, maybe we'll be going into the aspect of preaching, but let's look at this one. Now, don't forget the first one I've shown you us. Our love life as Christians can attract sinners to come and join us. Last week, our prosperity can make sinners to decide to, to join us to serve the God that we serve. But today, let's look at, you know, evangelism without words. First Peter chapter 3. We'll read verse 1 and 2, King James Version. we we'll read verse 1 and 2 amplified version we now read verse 1 to 6 from the message bible so let's start with uh, the king james first peter chapter 3 verse 1 and verse 2 i read are you there it says wives likewise be submissive to your own husband that even if some do not obey the word now don't take this as a license to marry a non-believer 
now this gospel was actually being uh, pointed to those who were already married before they got born again now and they got born again but their husbands were still sinners he's now saying look at this he said wives likewise be submissive to your own husbands that if some do not obey the word they without a word may be won by the conduct of what of their wives verse 2 that they may be won by conduct of their wives now when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear now let's go to the amplified version we read verse 1 and 2 before we go to a message we read verse 1 to 6 now this amplified it says like manner you married women be submissive to your own husband in brackets subordinate subordinate yourself as being secondary and dependent them and adapt yourself to them so that even if they do not obey the God of God they may be won over not by discussion but by the goodly lives the godly lives of their wives can you say without words verse 2 when they, when they observe the pure and modest way in which you conduct yourself together together with your reference for your husband you are to feel for him all that reference includes to respect uh, reverse reference him to honor esteem appreciate price and a human sense to adore him that is to admire praise be devoted to deeply love and enjoy your husband i think i'll use this scripture once uh marriage uh family sunday teach now let's now go to the message bible we're now going to take one to six from the message bible thank you it says the same goes for you wives good wives be good wives. what's happening to this be good wives to your husband responsive to their needs there are husbands who indifferent as they are to any words about god will be captivated i love that they will be captivated verse 2 why would they be captivated by your life of holy beauty now he's talking about holy beauty here now let's go on i purposely want to read six verses what manner is not sorry what matters is not your outer appearance now he's not saying don't take care of your outward appearance so, but he say the one that will convert them it's not just for you to be putting on the powders the eye pencils the lipsticks you know that's not it's part it's part of beauty but that's not the one that will convince them let's let's go uh the styling of your hair the jewelries you wear you know the cut of your clothes he say that's not the thing but your inner disposition hmm, calculative inner beauty hallelujah cultivate sorry cultivate inner beauty sorry cultivate inner beauty the gentle gracious kind that god delights in verse 5 the holy women of old were beautiful before god that way and were good loyal wives to their husbands verse 6 sarah for instance taking care of abraham would address him as my dear husband you will be true you will be true daughters of sarah if you do the same you know unanxious and unintimidated hallelujah now if you look at the summary of everything that i've just said i wrote here evangelism without words is when you by your attitude attract people to jesus when we say evangelizing evangelism without words is when by your attitude your behavior you attract people to jesus now people will have dealings with you you know they relate with you and your relate they are relating with you will convince them to say ah and i would love to have this jesus that you prove you know i wrote here from from this scriptural verse we see 
we see that evangelism is possible by character without opening our mouth to preach. We see that evangelism is possible by character without opening our mouth to preach. That's the whole, the essence of the whole verses we read. I just want to show you that your character alone can preach the gospel. And if there is anything that today's Christians are really lacking, I'm telling you, it's in this aspect of character. So many of today's Christians don't have character. And I will tell you why. Now, I'll be telling you the why from how you can develop Christian character. Now, that's the best way of, the best, one of the best form of evangelism. When you are not opening your mouth to preach, but people relate with you and they want to serve God that you serve, that you, you claim to know, just by relating with you alone. Now, and that is what it means to be a Christian. Now, if you study your scriptures very well in Acts of Apostles, you will see that the name Christian was just a nickname. The original name that we're supposed to bear is believers or disciples of Christ. That's the original thing that we're supposed to disciples of Christ. Because in the days of Christ, Jesus will always say, follow me, follow me. And you know a disciple, a disciple is a follower. Praise God. So follow me, follow me. A disciple is a follower. We, we wouldn't have been called Christians to have been called disciples of Christ. Amole in Christi Reo, Amole in Christi Reo, Amole in Christi Reo. But in Antioch, the Bible says, you know, the, uh, it was Paul and Barnabas that went to Antioch. They spent about two years in Antioch. And the Bible says people look at them. They remember Jesus and call them Christians, which means these people are like Christ. Christ-like. Now, that was what now swallowed the name they were calling us before, disciples of Jesus, believers, you know. It now become, became Christians. It means that you are not a Christian by birth because you were born into a Christian family. You should be a Christian when your life begins to manifest the life of Christ. So, evangelism, I come again, evangelism without words is when you preach Christ with your lifestyle when your life your character shows that you have met the lord now i have a question here that we are going to answer hallelujah what can i do as a believer to get to this point in my work with god what can i do as a believer to get to this point in my work with god now we may not get there the day we gave our life to christ i remember a story that the apostle Alimi shared with us in a meeting that I attended many years ago. He said there was this man. All of everybody called him John, the, the, great, the great smoker. John, the great smoker. Now, there was this altar call. Who will give his life to Christ? In a crusade. John lifted his hand. I will give my life to Christ. I want to give my life to Christ. So they led him to Christ. And they now told them that they were going to be baptized. That the moment they baptize them, it means that their salvation is complete. He asked what is the meaning of baptism. They said, baptism is when you are dipped into the water, you are buried with Christ. All your old natures have been buried together with Christ. And when you come out, you come out a new being. You know what John did? He went to buy more cigarettes. And started smoking. Smoking heavily. They now fixed the day of baptism for them. John smoked to the point that he, he was smoking till he got to the point of baptism. And the pastor said, why did you smoke this much? He said, the reason is because you told me that when you plant me in the water, that was, that's when my old nature will end. So I wanted to make, he said, I want to make the last use of my old self so that by the time I come out of the water, nothing like cigarette will touch my mouth again. And that was what John did. As he smoked the last stick, came out for baptism. The pastor didn't want to baptize him. He said, baptize me, I'm ready. They now asked him, are you now ready to let go of your old life? He said, yes. Are you ready to embrace the new life of Christ? He said, yes. They dipped him in water. They came out. He came out. The parks that he now left beside with the matches, he left them at the entrance of the stream. Somebody now said, John, you are forgotten. Pick your ma matchbox and the remaining cigarette. He said, no, I don't know who owns it. They said, you are the one that put it here. Ah, he said, the man that brought this thing here died in the water. Praise the Lord. That the man that came out now is a new one. 
that we have nothing to do with cigarettes and ma- how do you get to that point as a Christian when you begin to manifest the life of Christ in your behavior let's read the Bible in Ephesians let's go to Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 25 to verse 27 Ephesians 5 25 to 27 let's go there Ephesians 5 25 to 27 now look at this it says husband love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her verse 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse her with what with the washing of water by what by the word now it means that listen the word of God is the instrument that God will use for our our washing so if our character is going to be molded it is the word of God that God will use and what do we need to do number one you will have to submit yourself to the molding power of the word of God that's the first thing that will make your character to change you will have to submit yourself to the molding power of the word of God and I will tell you how I will tell you how you will have to submit yourself to the molding power of the word of God because the word of God is the ingredient that the Holy Spirit will take hold of for your molding I, I was not like this before I gave my life to Jesus I always tell people some people say oh, pastor please you are so gentle you are very quiet now I was very shy before I gave my life to Jesus if I'm still shy till now the only time I'm courageous is when I hold the microphone yes I, I, I can say it anywhere but one thing with me before I get, got born again when he talks about keeping my list I had a master degree ah, you can't offend me and I'll forgive you in my days of unbelief I can still be I'll be telling you the offense and the date 20 years ago so so and so date in fact we tell you the clothes you wore the 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 the, the color of your shoe and I would because I found it very difficult to forgive people. But when I got born again, hear me, every single time the word of God comes forth, hear me and hear me very well, every single time the word of God comes forth and that word of God hits you in the area that you feel that is your weakness, God is showing you areas that you need to submit for the molding. Now, for instance, now, in those days, when I get to fellowship and my pastor keep preaching, my pastor will be showing me how from the Lord's prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass us, which means God cannot forgive me until I show forgiveness. I started saying it. I started hearing it. You know, as I was hearing that word, ah, and that was my strongest area. Malice, strongest area, meaning. Now, the word of every single time, the word of God hits you in your area you know that you are struggling anytime the word of god shows you that you are weak is for a purpose now listen look at how the transformation will take place i wrote here a question how does it happen how does this how will this transformation take place a the holy spirit amplifies the word of god in your heart and makes it so heavy to the point can i go on to the point that you will see the word of God I omitted something here to the point that you will see your you will see your error the Holy Ghost will magnify it he will amplify it so the moment I started hearing hey, unforgiveness God cannot forgive you don't know how to forgive I started seeing unforgiveness as a sin that's the job of the Holy Ghost the pastor will just be preaching. The Holy Ghost is the one that transforms. And how will he transform you? He will convict you. How will he convict you? He will amplify that word of God you are hearing. He will amplify it in your heart. I was talking to, uh, trying to settle some people some weeks ago. And the lady said, sir, I forgive him. I've shown forgiveness to him. I said, eh. He said, there was a time you were preaching. And the preaching you were preaching, you said, there's somebody that offended you, you decided you were not going to forgive them. 
you not forgive the person see look at what the bible says about unforgiveness he said she wept that this person really offended me but from that day she had the word something kept telling her you see that thing that is telling you is the holy spirit showing you that see you cannot continue with this character and still remain a disciple of jesus so that's the first thing the word of god will come the holy ghost will take hold of it the holy spirit we amplify the word of god in your heart and make it so heavy to the point that you will feel so convicted and i'm wrong go and i'm wrong go now when you feel like that the holy spirit is trying to work on something that was how i started i will tell you how i conquered the thing kept going. So, and one thing I discover about God is this. When he wants you to conquer a nature, hear me. He will raise people that will be provoking you in that area. For instance, if God wants you to, he's working on you, that you need to conquer anger. You will continue to meet people that will provoke you, to be provoking you. Until you conquer that anger, they won't stop provoking They will keep provoking you until you get to a point that you don't have any anger left in your memory bank. Hallelujah. Some people call it conviction. Once the Holy Spirit does this, He will leave it up to you to do the next thing. Now, what's the first one is the conviction. The Holy Ghost will be ringing that word in your heart ringing that word in your heart that why are you speaking abusive language are you not a child of god look at you you are talking like unbeliever the thing will be coming to your heart there will be this com com conviction going on in your heart now that's the first stage that word you have had everybody had it but everybody does we now have the same experience because areas that the holy spirit wants to work on each one of us differs but he'll pick your own and begin to ring it in your heart begin to ring it in your heart begin to ring it now it will now lead to the next thing after he must have convicted you you know he's showing your heart you will now move to the next one what's the next thing the next thing is for you to enforce yourself to act in line with the conviction the word of god by the holy spirit impressing your heart i come again number two you will need to enforce yourself to act in line with the conviction the the word of god by the holy spirit of god impressing your heart now look up if you are finished writing put this on screen for me first corinthians chapter 9 24 to 27 from the king james version we'll read it as i go on but i want you to understand something the most stubborn part of us human don't forget you are a, you have a soul you live in a the most stubborn part of us is our flesh this body you know the human body is not going to make heaven hello that's why the bible says at death if a person if a christian dies his spirit resurrects now if a christian is going to go by rapture the bible says when the trumpet sound we shall be what transformed some versions say we shall be changed we shall pull off this one this one is not going anywhere now that is why this one is trying to rise against you to make sure that you don't become like Jesus. So your number one enemy is not even Satan. Your number one enemy is your flesh. You know this was what we didn't understand when I just gave my life to Christ. I read a book that your flesh is your enemy. Beat your flesh so that your flesh can obey the word. So anytime I sit down with a sister as a young Christian and my body is moving, I went to buy Cain. I'm telling you true life experience. I will go to the bedroom and begin to flog myself. <laughs> you won't take me to hellfire in that every evil spirit in you that is rising. It is not the it beats the flesh. It's not beating this physical one. What he's trying to say is you must enforce it to do the will of God. At first it will be enforcement before it becomes a lifestyle. Say right here. Okay, let's read the scripture so that we can see what I'm saying. 
are you there? First Corinthians chapter 9, 24 to 27. Your God have said that they say. First Corinthians chapter 9. Look at this. He said, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? He said, Run in such a way that you may obtain obtain it. You know, everybody is running. But see, it is not running that matters. So the Bible says, Run in such a way that you can obtain the prize. That's why the Bible says, On the last day, so many will come to Jesus and say, Lord, did you not cast out demons in your name? He said, You did. You cast out demons. But you are workers of iniquity. So it's not everybody that profess. Now, to walk in a way to obtain the prize, look at the next verse. Next verse. Next verse. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a perishable crown. But we for an imperishable crown. Next verse. We for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run toss, not with uncertainty thus I fight not as one who beats the air but look at 27 I love 27 I run as one not as one who beats the air he said but I do what I discipline my body it shows you that your body doesn't want to do the will of God yes there is no time your body will want to do the will of God even up till now I got born again in 1991. Even up till now, when the Holy Ghost wakes me up to pray at times, my body doesn't want to wake up. My body doesn't want to stand up. Even up till now. Ah, ah I'll sleep small. Okay, I'll do it by four. I'll do it by four. The thing will come again by four. Ah, ah can we do it by five? The body doesn't want to. You know why? The body is not going to heaven. The body was taken from the dust. To the dust it will return. So for you to now make the body, show me the scripture, for you to now make the body to begin to behave like Christ, it requires what? Discipline. It requires training. Some versions we use, I think it's the NIV version that I use, I, I train. Some versions we use, I train, I discipline my body and do what? And bring it into subjection. No, you can't do that. No, 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 you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. No, you can't, you can't. No, 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 this is not, this is not that. No, I, I, I put it under subjection. Because some of you think when you hear that somebody is a man of God, it is easy for them to live a holy life. Now lie. The man of God too is flesh and blood. If you have read scripture, did you see where Jesus got angry because of food? Did you not see it? The Bible says he was coming towards a fig tree. He was looking at the tree afar off. Ah, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. He got near it. There was no food. It cost me you. Ah, ah. What's that? Mr. Flesh. No form. Moses that has been running the race of leading God's people, bringing them out of Egypt. Look at where he missed it. The people came and started to provoke him. I don't know this kind of leader that you are. Eh? Imagine what are your God cannot give us. Come on, what are your God? The Bible says he got angry. I went to the people and said to them, ah, what do you mean? Do you think we, me and my brother cannot give you water? He now went to the presence of God. Oh God, you see these people are so stubborn. These people are so this. And God said to him, Moses, when you go out there, speak to the rock. And water will come forth. The Bible says he got out there. Out of anger. He didn't speak to the rock. He spoke to the people. Do you think my, me and my brother cannot give you water? And after speaking to the people, he struck the rock. And God said, today, you have not declared me as a holy God before the people. You will see the Canaan land. That was how his journey ended. You must learn to enforce enforce yourself to do the right thing yourself doesn't want to do it your flesh doesn't want to stop stealing your flesh doesn't want to stop lying your flesh doesn't want to stop fornicating your flesh doesn't want to stop cheating your flesh doesn't want to stop being proud but it is you that will say no 
I want to make heaven. Let's finish that scripture. Let's finish that scripture. It says least, which means if you don't subject your flesh, when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Which means if you don't control your flesh, your flesh can disqualify you from making the kingdom of God. I'm showing you how to build Christian character. You know, many years ago, I started building my pastoral, my pastoral um, um, character. People don't know that it's not easy to be a pastor. It's like the job of Moses. And I was reading scriptures. I was seeing that the requirements of a, being a pastor, it's not easy to try to love the people that hate you. But I don't have choice. So that I will not be disqualified at the end. Enforce your flesh. Let me tell your neighbor, enforce your flesh. I didn't hear you clearly. Now, to now back it up more, look at what Jesus Christ, our Lord, said in Matthew 16, 24. If you are going to be my real disciples, look at what Jesus said. Matthew 16, 24. We'll now go back again to read 22 and 23 to see why Jesus spoke to verse 24. Look at 24. Let's read together. After the count of three. One, two, and let's go. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, wait, show us the old King James Version. There's a word that is missing here. Okay, let's go again. One, two, three, let's go. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, what should you do? Let him deny himself. What's the problem again? What's the problem again? Self. Your self doesn't want to do the will of God. So, if you want to follow Jesus, okay, let's read from the NIV version. I think the NIV version is what I uh, use the word that I'm looking for. NIV. Thank you. Let's read together. One, two, three, and let's go. Then Jesus said to him, his disciples, if anyone will come after me, he still come after me. I'm looking for a word. Show me NLT. NLT. You know, I've studied this verse with several scriptures. I'm trying to look for the particular word. And Jesus said unto me, if anyone want to, yes. NLT. Let's read together. One, two, three, and let's go. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you want to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways fake up your cross and follow me what gave birth to this statement show me verse 22 and verse 23 let's go back to our king james verse 22 and verse 23 but peter took him aside and began to re reprimand re 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 him reprimand him sorry for saying something now which means peter jesus was saying you know what you know what I'm going to go to the cross I'll be killed after three days I'll be buried and after three days I'll come back Peter took him and said ah, don't say that rubbish don't say that rubbish stop that then Jesus called him aside and said Peter ah, this is Mr. Flesh is still there if anyone will be my disciple that's the most difficult part of being a Christian if anyone will be my disciple. Your flesh doesn't want you to be disciples of Christ. That's why your flesh keeps desiring the things that's against God's will. And if we walk in the flesh, we can't convert anybody to Jesus. Because the world will not see us as special people. To them, we'll be like, like them. The same like them. They can keep malice easily. They can pull up their, their shirts and fight in public. But we cannot because we have somebody we are following. They can lie. They can cheat. They can decide to say, okay, let me have extramarital affairs. They can do all those things. But we are under the leadership of a master. We have somebody that we are trying to follow. 
and his condition is if you must follow me oh, is it this your flesh you must say no to it that's why you know what I'm still establishing I'm trying to establish that if you don't enforce yourself to act in line with the conviction of the word of God by the Holy, that the Holy Spirit is impressing your heart you cannot change I wrote here the human body is very stubborn it requires a determined person to be able to manage it the human body very stubborn it requires a determined person have you been in situations before that something just be telling you ah, are you a dance stand up and slap him stand up and talk are you are you dense and the thing is just ah, ah, stand up React, react, react. But it's against God's will. The flesh is stubborn. Very stubborn. I wrote here, character development cannot be achieved without self-discipline. I have decided I want to be like Jesus. I told you the story now in one of our um, uh, couples program, Family Sunday, that Reverend Mrs. David, Reverend Mrs. Solushile shared with us about a woman that always had misunderstanding with her husband. Her husband always bitter. Then a friend told her, let's go to a herbalist. The herbalist will give you a charm that will make your husband not to beat you again. And she agreed. They didn't know that the herbalist had become born again. But the man didn't want to disappoint them. So when they came, the man, they told them their case. The man went inside the house, put three stones inside a, a, a calabash that has painted white and brought the three stones out and told this to the woman that you see these stones, if any of them should fall down, you are dead. Once your husband start knocking the door of the house, put one at the right side of your mouth, the other one at the left side of your mouth and the third one under your tongue. Once it enters your mouth, if it falls down, madam, you are dead. So the husband started knocking back, 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 knowing his wife to be a troublesome woman, that is fire to fire woman. As the woman came to open the door, he said, I know you are very stubborn, stubborn woman. How long did it take you to come and open this door? She wanted to speak. She remembered that the stone must not fall. I know there are some deep demonic people. I told you, when God wants to change you, he will raise people to provoke you in that area. The man said, Am I below your head? Fake. Get me my food. The year woman went to the kitchen, brought the food. So this is what you can cook. Look at you. You are good for nothing. She wants to talk again. She remembered the stone. And it was like that for three days. After the third day, according to the instruction of the Baba, do it for three days. And you're there will be peace. Your husband won't beat you again. He went back to for Thanksgiving. Daddy, these three days, my husband did not touch me. Oh. He didn't beat me. Oh. This your stone is working. Oh. Then the Baba laughed. He said, it's not the stone. I only use the stone to show you something. That your mouth is the problem. And since you were able to control it for three days, because you didn't want that stone to fall, you see that the husband didn't beat you. So go now without the stone. Control your mouth. There will be peace in your marriage. Character development can never be done without self-discipline. I wrote here, you must keep refusing your body things that contradicts the word of God. And you must continue to enforce it to act according to biblical principles. You want to develop a prayer life? Enforce your flesh to continue to, to stand up to pray. You want to conquer in nature? Keep enforcing your flesh not to act accordingly. I'm telling you, you'll see that you get to a point. You conquer it. Hallelujah. The next one. We are looking at how to form the character of Christ. Number three. Never allow anyone to make you feel you have developed the natures of Jesus already. This is another error some people believe they have, they have gotten there. 
I don't, nothing needs to change about my life again. Nobody has got in there. Me go to the bed. We all are in the process. So some people no longer welcome change. When the word of God is coming, um, the pastor is preaching, you always hear them say, tell them. Instead of saying, tell us. Tell them. Tell them. And what does that mean? I mean, same thing. Just tell the others. Don't ever grow to a point in your Christian life where you will not be humble under the word of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't ever think you have grown to that point. That's why at times I used to wonder that are these people born again when the message is on, somebody is pressing phone. And you are pressing phone, watching Facebook or responding to a chat. I used to wonder when I see people like in our days, nobody thought you know there was no phone in our days. But in our days, when we gave our life to Christ, once we are in church, we concentrate. So don't ever think you have got in there. Don't get to a point, a a a, a, a level of um, self satisfaction. Is there anything new that God's seeming to do in your Christian life? You say, no. No, I've, I'm, I've gotten there already. Gotten where? You haven't gotten there, my sister. You haven't gotten there at all. Me, myself, I'm still on the way. Look at the level that uh, uh, Stephen got to. Have you read Acts of Apostles? They were stoning him. If it were to be today, Stephen would pray the mountain of prayer, mountain of fire prayer, where they are stoning him. A dao kunya pada, ema akuti ona tiana, tama tama to go to. You know, a piti wa wano gospel unse, in the name of prayer. But you know what Stephen said? He said, Father, at his dying point, please forgive them. I know they do not know what they are doing. Any time I read that, it 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 always tear in me, passion for more patience. Look at what Paul the Apostle said about this. Philippians chapter 3, 8 to 15. Philippians chapter 3, 8 to 15. Look at what Paul the Apostle said. Don't ever think you have gotten there or else you will relax. He said, yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ. Christ Jesus, my, Savior, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded every, everything else, counting it all garbage, so that I may gain Christ. Can you see? Everything to me is garbage, comparing to gaining Christ. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which, well, that which is true faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God, by faith. Verse 10. Verse 10. We'll stop at verse 15. Now, he said, what's my hunger? Paul is saying, look at my hunger. My hunger is this thing, that I may know him. With the level that Paul the Apostles was at that time, he was still saying that I may know him. He wrote the, part, the greatest part of the New Testament. He was still saying that I may know him. You, you have not done anything, oh, but you have gotten to a point, you have plateaued that I, I have known him. I haven't known him. Say, say that I may know him. Yes. Ah, I, I had Pastor Adibu he shared this experience, and I'm still praying, Lord. I want to know you more. That the, the founder of Redeem, Baba Kindayomi, you know, he was in White Garment Church before. He was in Kiruba and Zerafu for 21 years. Before God led him to go and start Redeem. And Redeem was not just Redeem, it was Ijoy Rapada. It was a Yoruba church. Pastor Debo shared that Baba shared with him that there was a day there was no more money at home, no food to eat. Baba now prayed that Lord have your way. He said, God said he should tell his wife that the pot of soup that they have, that they want to eat last, that she should not look into it. That as long as she does not look inside, she should just be home with a bent face, a face facing another direction to take things inside. The day she looked inside, the pot would be empty. They said, Baba said, 
there are days the spoon will bring snail. The day she looked into it, the pot was completely empty. I have not known that kind of God. Let me now say I've got in there. I've not got in there. In my service to God, I never reached that level. Let me now be I've got in there. I've got in. I've got in there. I've not got in there. You know why a lot of people are feel relaxed? Maybe because of your spiritual titles. Pope. Bishop. Apostle. Abi. You are apostle now. Me, I'm ordinary pastor. But with all Paul's exploit, he said that I may know him. You know, this understanding is what will make you to want to do morning devotion every day. I, am I communicating? If you don't have this understanding, the, you won't have anything that will drive to God's presence. They will be forcing you to come to church. Okay, let me tell you another one again. That the priest did not even understand this one. He tried to argue it. Pastor Adiboy said he was drinking tea. Lord, Lord, I would like you to join me to take this tea. And as he carried the jug to pour tea, it was empty. I never reached there. That I may know him. Oh, should I tell you the one that Pastor Adiboy shared again? The driver was on high speed. A trailer was coming. There was this small bridge. And it cannot, it could not, the bridge cannot contain two vehicles at the same time. But the, the driver couldn't apply brakes anymore. They thought they were dead. Boom! As they passed through, they passed side by side. Pastor Adebo said he came down and he started foot counting. You know, how did this truck and this car Pass side by side on this small bridge. And he concluded, God expanded the bridge so that I will not die. I'm here to know him. Don't ever think you have got in there. King of the cover to me, to me, Timor. Ah. That's why some of you don't you don't have notes again. You come to church, no joker. You don't have any writing material. You just come and sit down. If I didn't come to church, they would ask of me. Abby? So, let me go for them, Joe. That I may know him. Ah, look at the level that Mary. Let me use, Lord, I'm just using this word. Ordinary, small girl. Angel appeared to her. And said to her, You shall carry a son. His name shall be Jesus. But let me tell you, your cousin is pregnant, and the pregnancy is six months now. She's hiding herself. Nobody knows. And she, the Bible says, she left her place to go look for her cousin that was hiding. The Bible says, As she asked Auntie Elizabeth, the Bible says, As the baby in her womb had the voice of Mary, the baby leaped. Elizabeth had no choice than to tell her that I'm pregnant. Too. The baby moved as he heard your voice. He said, An angel visited me and told me you are pregnant for six months. If you are Elizabeth, what will you do at that time? You just be shouting, God, you are too great. I never reached that level. That I may know him. If you are hungry, you will buy many other Bibles. Some of you, it is the same one Bible you are using since you got born again. 25 years ago. I've read the Bible, Genesis to Revelation several times. I, have, I am still reading again and again. My current study now is the book of Proverbs. I read Proverbs every day. One chapter every day. Let's finish it. Let's finish it. There's no time. So we can take his flesh and blood. 
verse 15. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. Not that I have already attained. Imagine Paul is saying, not that I have already attained though, or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which for Christ Jesus had laid hold of me. I'm pressing on. Verse 13, we'll stop at 15. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Some of you are holding to your past testimonies. In the days when I won 100 souls, what are you winning now? No, that's the truth. In the days when I... That record is gone. What are you winning now? Paul said, brethren, I do not count myself to have a prayer. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. You know what? Uh, on Sunday, the team that will handle the... Hold on with this scripture. That will handle the convention publicity. I went to fix my, my, gear, my gear on the street at Osami. I've never been to that street in my life. I told you now. That street that I said I saw you. I have never, I didn't know that that street exists. I now say, we have, I don't think we have ever shared that bill to this point before. I was now telling myself that we are going to strategize very well to enter corners. Not that I have already attained. For you to grow, you have to forget the past. There is an, a fresh level in front that God wants to take you into. They ask Elisha, what do you want when I'm about to leave? He said, I want a double portion. Some people say, if I can do what you have done, I know I'm okay. Let's finish that scripture fast, fast, fast. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward for those things which are ahead. There are still many things ahead. So many great things God wants to do through your hands. Brethren, where, where am I? Verse 14. We stop at 15. I press towards the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ. And verse 15. Shagada basket. Therefore, let us, as many as are matured, have what? Have this mind. Which mind? This kind of mind that we have not gotten there. We still need to strive. And if anything you think Otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Now look at how the given me sat. That's how people that have retired used to sit in the gospel. We say, "Hey, Mountain, hey, Mountain, show us why." Everyone, you can we go on, but she manage to come here. I want to back back see see. Ijo, Ijo, la madi ni ati to ati to fe ma kwali wambi. Yeah, Mountain, show us why fun. Just exactly the way he's. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that's how he is. So, but the way he's sitting, that's how such so, people so used to sit in church. They won't be part of anything. When they see people that want to be radical for Jesus, they tell them stories. You don't know anything about this church. They'll put their goggle like that on their nose. At his evangelist, I could sing a gambe. Lastly, truth you should know about yourself as a believer. Second Corinthians 5:20. Know that you are an ambassador of Christ. You are an ambassador. Say I'm an ambassador. An ambassador is the representative of a country in another country. You are an ambassador of Jesus. In that house where you are living, people should follow you to church. I will give you an assignment next month by next uh, 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 Bible study. I will give you an assignment for one, each one of us to follow up, win a soul and follow that soul up. Where is the scripture? Where is the scripture? Where is the scripture? Second Corinthians. Chapter 5 and verse 20. Palava said the lemosin. Shagada baskele. I'm waiting for you. 
embarrassing. Second Corinthians 5.20. Use me, Lord. Revive me, Lord. Bring out your best out of my life. Let's read together one, two, three, and let's go. Now, then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we employ you. On Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. We are ambassadors. Our life should attract people to Jesus. We are Christ's representative. I'm not using this pulpit, hear me, to preach self. I'm only using it to preach Christ. We finished service on Sunday at the Elebu Church. And one of our new members, he has been a member since about, it will be two months now. He works as a security guard and is the head of them in the community, but he doesn't live in the community. So as he was coming to church, he told me that as he was coming to church, and I largely saw him and one of those rich guys in our community stopped him and said, you are a security man, the head of the security of this community, what are you doing in the community during the day? You finished your work. You should go home. Hmm. The Baba now paused. An elderly man. He now said again to me, Daddy, Kinto, sorry. Beshin, Shinike, Mashilo. Unia, son, Kontefeso. Kile, wala, dubui. He told the Baba, the Alaji, Alaji, Muwa church ni. Ah. Wa church, ewa church. Church Bulelo. Church Pastor Falabini. Ah, ah, he said the Elijah said, eh, Church Pastor Falabi. Ah, Pastor he had da. He dipped his hand to his pocket and gave him one thousand naira for coming to church and what Pastor Falabi. Unisa, Daddy, I want Elaji he is a Christian. But why ya mele nuko moji daru koi? Mombato fumilu. You know what I was doing as I was going? I said, Lord, make me to be more like you. Make me to be more like you. Make me to be more like you. Help me that I'll be more like you. That my life will not drive people away from Jesus. But will bring them more closer to you. I was praising and I was asking for more grace. You are an ambassador. Please represent Jesus well. Before you begin to fight in your compound, don't forget that we will soon give you an bill. <laughs> Brother Femi, why are you like? We will soon give you an bill to go and share. Where will you share it? <laughs> because I noticed that most times when we share an bill, we used to pick our an bills back. Some of you are very bad at home. So you just leave it back on the chair. Right? For me, I want to be like Jesus. Who do you want to be like? I love that song. Is it not the hymn Famimora? I don't know it, but I just the only place I know. Da, 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 Oshas, please come and move this. 